Did you know you can use those angry pixies living in your wall to melt away metal? Using EDM. No, not that EDM. Electrical Discharge Machining. And in today's video from Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest 2024, sponsored by LDO Motors, we're checking out the Rack Robotics booth and their PowerCore V2 at home wire EDM kit. So thank you again to LDO Motors for printer parts, kits, accessories, and more. Check them out at the link in the description. Okay, cool. We're here with Cooper from Rack Robotics, and they have an at-home DIY? DIY? Counts D as DIY? DIY. Yeah, DIY. Yeah, it's a DIY open source. Wire EDM machine. Yep. So <laughs> starting off, one, it's not a 3D printer. It's attached to a 3D printer, but it's not a 3D printer. So first, what is a wire EDM machine? So wire EDM is a subset of EDM machining. So it's electrical discharge machining. It's a non-contact, low force machining process. It uses high voltage to initiate sparks between a tool and a work piece. And it goes in, and those sparks going several thousand times a second actually vaporize the work piece, creating plasma that's hotter than the sun. So you can machine any conductive material with this process right on your desktop. Okay, so you have a demo right here that basically just shows you the simplest way how a wired EM works. So yeah. So what do we got here? What is this? What are we so, so we've got an output, power output on the power core going over to our workpiece here. Anodes on the work, cathodes in my hand, and we just have a thin piece of aluminum and a brass rod. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut through this. And we can just cut pieces off of this. Okay, so obviously you you kind of really don't want to be doing this by hand in a perfect right. world. You you want to automate this process, mm -hmm. right? CNC wise. Right. So that's why we made the wire tool. So this is the wire tool. It's about the same price as a premium hot end for your 3D printer, and it'll work on any 24 volt printer. I've got these magnetic covers here. I can show you how it works. So this is all going to be open source hardware too. So we've got our wire supply here at the top. You're gonna be able to get these in quarter kilogram spools. The wire comes down, goes through this uh, Bowden tube here, down to the tensioner right here, where these two roller bearings pinch the wire. And that provides tension as it moves through the system, goes through a ceramic wire guide in here, and down to these idlers. After it goes to the idler, it goes and gets energized at this tungsten carbide block, gets collected up here at a waste spool on the back side. So let me turn on the spool for you. So now you can see the spools moving on the backside here. So it pulls the filament through, it doesn't it, feed it through, right? Right, the wire gets pulled through under tension. So here, this wire is under tension. Okay. And that's necessary because there are some small forces in the EDM process that are going to push that wire away every time there's a vaporization event. It's going to, because there's, there's water expanding, water turning into steam locally at that yep. little microscopic spark. So it's gonna push the wire away. You want it to be under tension so it returns again, and you've got small deflection, good accuracy in your cut. And I can actually show you something that we've machined with this. So this was done on the Ender 3. We just put this in a 3D printed jig in this orientation, and cut from nozzle back to the end of the heat sink. And it can cut through multiple different material types at the same time of multiple different thicknesses. Couple things. How? How? So, any? Pretty much, you can cut through anything that's electrically conductive. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes. We've done anything from aluminum to tungsten carbide. Obviously, we have water here. Why do we yeah. have it in water? For somebody right. who doesn't know. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so you've got a high voltage potential and then a ground potential. So your work and your tool. Between those, if you initiate a spark or an arc in air, there's not really any way to cool down the stuff that vaporizes away. So, in order to cool that vapor down and get it into a little sphere of waste, we have that in water. The other reason we have that is water provides a relatively consistent dielectric constant. So being electrical discharge machining, you need to break down the dielectric in order to get a consistent machining effect. So the water does two things. It clears away waste and it produces a consistent spark length. So having a consistent dielectric breakdown means your spark is the same length over time. So you're gonna be able to cut a more consistent profile in a dielectric than in just air. Okay. So I know this is something people are gonna wonder. We've got high voltage electricity, we've got water, <laughs> and we've got a human. Yes. So yes. what is, what? How, how safety involved, how safe is this? So is, 
Yeah. <laughs> There's, we've done our best to consider safety with this, but as always, it is a high voltage process. Okay. Like, How many volts is it running? This is running, this can go up to 72 volts. Currently, the firmware is set at 65 volts at the capacitor output. Okay. So, And you're doing all these cuts at that voltage, right? Yes, all of okay. these cuts have been done at the 65 volt output. Um, our benchmark, um, I'll, I'll do speed later. So don't touch it. Don't put your hand in the water. Turn it, turn the power core off before you go to change anything, just general things like that. If you're standing here and it's machining, you're not in any danger. Obviously, if you have heart conditions or pacemaker, you need to talk to your doctor first before using this. There are electrical fields that are generated, the EMI is generated from the high voltage establishing current and then stopping current over and over again. You're going to get an electric field opening yep. and closing a lot which is why the power cables that come with this, they're twisted pairs. And then also, if we take a look at the Wago bank here, I'm gonna show you what we've done to try to minimize EMI problems with this. Number one, we have a grounded connection to the endoskeleton here. So this endoskeleton is at ground potential. It's not going to become an unintentional antenna. Okay. Um, as well, we have two of the anode wires. They f they're twisted with and come with the cathode wire and they're just locked here. They don't do anything. Okay. But being paired and twisted all the way to this point, it creates the shortest untwisted path down to where the actual machining happens. Okay. So we've taken pains to minimize the amount of EMI from that. Awesome. Um, and the speed, yes, going speeds. back to that, it's gonna depend on gotcha. the material. So how yeah. fast can you go, do you think? Like, cause so, like this plate right here, you're saying about, a, this is what, 0.6 millimeters? This is a 0.6 millimeter plate from the PowerCore V1 launch uh, back at the Kickstarter. This one, if you're cutting with the 1.5 millimeter brass rod, that's going to be, it's relatively slow, but if you're cutting with the 0 0.3 millimeter brass wire, we've gotten up to 100 millimeters per minute in this specific material. And then if you go up to like a three millimeter aluminum, we've gotten that up to 20 millimeters per minute linear speed with the 0 0.3 millimeter brass. So it depends highly on material type, on the thickness of the material, your dielectric, how well you're flushing, the tool diameter, like the wire, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Um, like say if you wanted to cut three millimeter steel, that's gonna be about four and a half times slower than aluminum cutting. If you're cutting three millimeter titanium, that's only about two to two and a half times slower than aluminum. Okay. For accuracy and whatnot, you're, you're pretty much gonna be just limited by how accurate the motion system you have it attached to yes. can move. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, so if you're capable of doing <laughs> perfectly 100 millimeter cubes on uh, an ender, this will cut a 100 millimeter cube. Now you do have to take account offset though, right? Right, because exactly. So you've got the, the wire, wire diameter, but then you also have in addition to that, the length of the spark where it reaches out to grab the work. You should do some calibration with your machine. Just do some test square cutouts, measure those and say, okay, I know in this dielectric in this material, I've got this level of offset. Okay, mm -hmm. and you basically just cut on, depending on this, mostly on the design, the outside perimeter, and then your internal shape would be what you need. And you can do some pretty crazy accurate stuff here. So you have this mm -hmm. nozzle right here that you've cut a star into. So. Yeah, yeah. So that was done with wire EDM as well. Uh, we took the, took the nozzle and we put it in the vise and we moved the wire over, threaded it through, and then maintained an offset, tried to find the center of that nozzle. And then just from center, we ran a G-code to get a star shape in there. This nozzle specifically is, this is a hardened steel nozzle. Okay. So we were able to cut that out with that accuracy in hardened steel. So you're pretty much just providing the power supply. Yep. Um, would that, that, so, yeah, so, what, so what's included? If somebody right. wants to get involved in this, right? So we have a few different machines here. We got an Ender. We have a DIY thing over there we're yes. going to take a look at. Yep. So if somebody wanted to get involved, what do they buy from you? What, what comes in the box, essentially? So the main thing we're selling right now is the power supply. That's the power core. You can get this on rackrobo.io. It's available for pre-order right now. We're going to be shipping the first units in two to three weeks right now. Um, this is what you need to do EDM. It provides the EDM waveform and voltage and also has several outputs like a current alert and a short alert. So when you're machining, if you want to monitor the machining current for those sparks that are going there, there's an output zero to five volts from that. Okay. If you want to monitor whether or not you're just slamming into the material, making a short circuit, we have an output for that. And then also you can see on the front, we have a USB-C port and a reset button for the RP2040 that's on the motherboard. 
Okay. If you want to play with the firmware, that's totally open. We're going to be putting that on GitHub when we ship the units as well. Okay. So we're going to be putting the PCB, the mechanical design, and the firmware all on GitHub when this gets shipped out. Okay, so it's, it's pretty much like a DOI kit. So you would get that, yep. and then you would need to either you, build you or modify an existing motion system. Mm -hmm. So we have an ender here, but people have done it with 3018s. People have scratch built. Yep. It, it depends on, I guess, what you're planning to machine, because whatever right. you put it on, obviously it's got to have a bucket to fill with water. Yeah, and so um, what we've done is we've taken care of the hardest part of EDM, which is the power supply. How do I pulse high voltage, high power at 5,000 times a second? Okay. And this can go up to 20 kilohertz if you modify the firmware. That's the highest we've taken it. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend going higher than that. You might break something. Okay. Um, but. If you want to break something, you can. It's open source. <laughs> it's open source. And then, so we also have this here. This is yeah. basically like a motion system demonstration, I guess. So we got a, yep. this is a. This is the beta wire. This is a fish tank. <laughs> B-E-T-T-A. So you like have the wire fish. going between these two tool heads. And this is two Core XY motion systems in here, yes. right? Yes. They're stacked on top of one another and all the motors are up here in the top in this compartment. Uh, force is transmitted down with an axle to the bottom core XY gantry. So it's just like two 3D printers sort of put on top of each other. And then there's a wire EDM machine on there. Yeah, if you um, want to see. So this got. will allow you to cut on angles, right? Because yes. these move independently. So you, yep. you yes. mount whatever you want to cut in the middle and then depending on you know how these move, if you want to cut on an angle or just vertically. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's cutting off the... That's cool. Just doing some skim passes right now. And this is just distilled water, right? Yep. From the store. Um, it gets pumped in there at 100 PSI and it's used to remove all the waste and the chips from the cut. You can cut anything conductive. You can cut aluminum, steel, titanium, uh, hardened steel. You can do Inconel. Um, there's also people who have had good luck cutting carbon fiber because carbon fiber yep. is conductive. Yeah, carbon fiber is an interesting one. Uh, there's definitely some, we've had a couple of universities asking us about that. How can we cut carbon fiber composite with this? Well, yes, you can, <laughs> but they're still trying to get that nailed down. Yeah. Because there's a lot of plastic in the way, but it is conductive. So they've been having some results with that. And this is pretty cool compared to like, uh, so if you were trying to do plate work, compared to you would need a water jet, yep. you would need a yep. laser, or you would need like just subtracting manufacturing, making yep. a mess of chips. This is relatively clean and cheaper. and cheaper. Yep. Yeah, much, much cheaper. Yeah. We discovered that it's actually easier to build a wire EDM machine than it is a laser. There's no optics train. It's easier yep. to build it than a water jet because it's lower pressure, it's lower force. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a much more scalable technology than the conventional subtractive manufacturing process, processes we're used to. But the technology wasn't accessible until just about a year ago when we launched the PowerCore V1 and we're doing the PowerCore V2 now, which is available on our website. Okay. And then speaking of accessible, that's just clipper. Yes. That's just clipper. Just regular old clipper, yeah. Because for controlling this, you pretty much just have generic G-code for moving it around and then yep. basically an on-off to turn the, the the cutter on and off, That's right, that's right. So it's really simple to program mm -hmm. for, right? Yeah, all it's, you need is a motion system. All you need is a motion system. You could yeah. DIY your motion system like this. This is going to be open source as well after a few more changes to it. Um, or you could put it on an existing machine like that using the uh, wire toolkit. Or just design something yourself. It yeah. depends on what you're looking to get. If you, if you exactly. want to do massive plates, mm -hmm. get a kiddie pool and put it in there yep. and off you go, basically. Exactly, yeah. The thing you're going to be limited by is how much dielectric can you get in there and how can you move your system. That is cool. This is something I've been following for a bit now and it's actually really cool to see in person. So, This was all 3D printed on a Bamboo X1C out of carbon fiber PLA. Um, most of the hardware is actually from McMaster Car, and the whole build comes in at under about $1,200, including the power modules. That's not bad for a wire EDM. Oh, yeah. So that was Rack Robotics with their DIY wire EDM. Where can they find more information at? You guys can find us on Twitter or X. You can also find us on Discord or on rackrobo.io. It has all of our social links there. Awesome. Be sure to check them out.